beyond the warmth of the sun, past the four rocky planets, further than the gas giants, at the very distant edge of our solar system, lie two worlds that we are only just beginning to explore and understand. They are the ice giants, Uranus and Neptune. These planets are dozens of times the mass of the Earth and are so distant that we've only managed to visit them once. In 1977, the Voyager 2 spacecraft took to the skies, embarking on a 12-year mission to reach what was once considered unreachable. But as we learned more about these massive icy worlds, we learned more about the satellites that orbit them too, the iciest and most far-out moons in the solar system. And in the Neptunian system, one moon stands out from the rest, Triton. Triton is a special moon, with properties we never imagined objects so far from the sun possessing but it wasn't until we reached the moon in 1989 that we finally began to understand its true origins. Triton is a captured world, plucked from its original position by Neptune, and today we will relive that story and how Triton came to be the standout moon of the ice giants. Triton was discovered just 17 days after the discovery of Neptune itself, on the 10th of October 1846, by astronomer William Lassell on his own self-constructed telescope. As a result, it was originally named the Satellite of Neptune, which it remained for over 100 years. It wasn't until 1949 that a second moon was discovered around the mysterious planet, and so the first had to be renamed. Whereas planets are typically named after Roman deities, their lunar counterparts are often named after their Greek equivalents. Neptune is the Roman interpretation of the Greek god Poseidon, and so Neptune's satellite was named after the son of Poseidon, giving it the name we know it by today, Triton. At a first glance, it would seem as if Triton is a child of the ice giant Neptune. At 2,700 kilometers in diameter, it is the largest of Neptune's 14 known moons and its mass accounts for over 99% of the mass of all the satellites that orbit the planet. This size makes it the seventh largest moon in the solar system, and 20% larger than the dwarf planet Pluto. It is made of mostly ice and metal, with a rocky metallic core encapsulated by layers of water ice, and some have speculated that subsurface oceans may exist beneath its frozen surface. The moon is estimated to be composed of between one-sixth and one-third water ice, but on the surface, another frozen material exists, nitrogen. This far away from the warmth and light of the sun, even nitrogen gas turns into a solid. As such, Triton is covered in a sheet of frosty frozen nitrogen, with cracks and icy lava flows ingrained on its surface. This nitrogen layer reflects over 70% of the precious little light that reaches the moon, but even so, the faint light of the sun still makes its mark on the surface. The nitrogen covering exists in a very fragile equilibrium, frozen by Triton's average surface temperature of minus 235 degrees Celsius. However, only a difference of a few degrees, and this equilibrium is broken, and it gives the planet a feature we never thought we would find on the surface of a body this far from the Sun. Triton is covered in geysers, erupting material over 8 kilometers into the air, which is carried and deposited hundreds of kilometers away by light winds. This process is driven by the faint sunlight. When it reaches the surface of the thin sheets of nitrogen ice, it heats the top layer. An increase in temperature of less than 5 degrees Celsius is enough to stir the material below, turning the frozen nitrogen back into gas, which bursts up through the frozen surface with water ice and dark material. These deposits mean that Triton's surface is constantly changing and being reshaped, but it also gives the moon an atmosphere. Triton's atmosphere consists of mostly nitrogen from the geysers and the geological activity with traces of methane also. It is a very thin atmosphere, but it is still enough for clouds to exist within, and wind currents to transport these dark materials downwind from the geysers. Geyser activity does not explain all of the surface features we see. The process is too light to explain the craters we see distributed sparsely across its surface. And so to find the origin of these features, you have to look at Triton's unusual orbit. Like most moons, Triton is locked into a synchronous rotation with Neptune. It orbits as fast as it rotates, meaning one side permanently faces the planet while the other side faces out into space. However, unlike most moons, it is the only large moon in the solar system which orbits in the opposite direction to its parent planet, in what is known as a retrograde orbit. 
This unusual direction and the inclination of it provides insight into Triton's origins. If Triton was truly a moon of Neptune and formed at the same time and from the same collapsing cloud of gas, then you would expect to see the planet and its moons orbiting in the same direction. We see this among all other large moons, and we also see seven so-called normal moons of Neptune orbiting in the same direction of the planet along its orbital disk. Triton, on the other hand, orbits much further away than these inner satellites and does so at an unusual angle and not along the orbital disk, and what this indicates is that Triton is not truly a moon of Neptune. Scientists now believe that Triton may actually be an object which formed beyond the orbit of Neptune in the Kuiper Belt a massive orbital ring of icy material on the very edge of our solar system, left over from its formation. It extends from Neptune's orbit to over 50 astronomical units away from the Sun, so that's 50 times the distance Earth orbits the star. And there's more evidence for this theory, as further out from Neptune, across the boundary of the Kuiper Belt, the Moon has an estranged twin, Pluto. Pluto is the most famous Kuiper Belt object due to its famous reclassification to the status of dwarf planet, but Pluto is not alone. The Kuiper Belt contains trillions of lumps of ice, ammonia and rock which are forming and destroying tiny dwarf planets and minor planets all the time. We now believe that this is how Triton formed too. As mentioned, it is only a fifth larger than Pluto and their compositions are extremely similar. So you would assume that if anything is made of the same stuff as Pluto, it may have formed under the same conditions. But then, if Triton was born in the Kuiper Belt, how did it come to be a moon of Neptune? The theory now states that Triton formed on the inner edge of the Kuiper Belt, but would have come to within touching distance of Neptune's orbit as it travelled through the outer reaches of the solar system. Usually, when this happens, these minor planets are moving too fast to be captured by a larger planet's gravity, so when the fledgling planet approached the orbit of the ice giant, something must have slowed it down. We don't know for sure what might have caused Triton to lose its momentum, but scientists believe the most likely cause would have been that Triton collided with a moon or proto-moon of Neptune, or with another dwarf planet. On top of this, Triton may have formed as a dwarf planet with its own small satellite moon, which would have been displaced by Neptune's gravity, further reducing its speed as it crossed paths with the giant planet. Regardless of how, the impact would have halted Triton in its tracks, rendering it powerless as it was sucked into Neptune's orbit but it wouldn't have entered orbit around Neptune in the circular fashion the Voyager spacecraft observed. Instead, it would have been flung into the Neptunian system in a chaotic, highly eccentric and elliptical orbit, which had a profound effect on the displaced dwarf planet. When a moon orbits a larger planet in an elliptical fashion, the gravitational influence from the parent planet is constantly changing as the distance between the planet and the satellite varies, and this creates friction on the interior. The gravity of the planet squashes and bends the moon, heating the interior through the appropriately named process of tidal heating. This process of friction, heat and convection appears to have given Triton a very unique characteristic for a moon, geological activity. It is one of only three geologically active moons in the solar system, another being Io of Jupiter, which is active through the same tidal processes. The gravitational forces of the parent planets can wreak havoc within a planet's interior and it is a rare sight for a rocky satellite orbiting a planet. While Io is considerably more active than Triton, the tidal heating effect would have warmed the inner materials in the new surrogate moon of Neptune, causing them to burst through faults in the moon's surface, giving it the rocky terrain we see today, which is tended to and reshaped constantly by the active geysers. While this tidal heating effect is no longer a consistent force on the moon, Triton could be considered a hive of geological activity despite being billions of kilometres from the sun, which disproved our once held belief that only silent, icy worlds could exist this far away from the sun. If Triton was captured by Neptune, it would also explain the lack of the expected number of other moons, and might explain why Neptune's second moon, Nereid, has such a disturbed orbit around its parent planet. Computer simulations have suggested that Triton's initial collision with whatever pulled it from the Kuiper Belt caused follow-on collisions between other moons, and so while those moons lost, Triton won. It had begun life as an orphan, destined to aimlessly wander the vast outer edge of the solar system before being plucked from the darkness by Neptune, where it now orbits as an adopted child of the massive planet. So today, we see Triton as a child of Neptune, albeit a standout one, but had its fortunes been different, it would have remained a dwarf planet, orbiting within the Kuiper Belt like Pluto, Sedna, Eris and many other small suspended objects in this massive icy wall which separates our region of space from the rest of the galaxy.
Triton is a distant moon, hiding some very unique properties. Humanity has a consistent present around some of the nearby planets in our solar system, but this secluded corner is still shrouded in mystery. And so, as humans, it is our nature, and some might say our duty, to explore beyond, and we are planning to go back. Voyager 2 is, as of the making of this video, the only craft to have flown by the moon and Neptune, and it made use of a very rare occurrence in planetary alignment in order to create a pathway to its destination. Our technology has since vastly improved, but reaching a world over 4 billion kilometres away is still an exceedingly difficult task. Of all the proposed missions to Triton, one that might deliver the best scientific value would be a landing mission. When we sent the Huygens probe to Saturn, it landed on its moon of Titan, and the photographs taken from the surface are the most distant photographs from the body of another world ever taken. Over a decade on, and we may be able to go one better, and land on the surface of a moon unfathomably further beyond even the gas giant planets. However, most of these proposed landing missions have been snubbed in favour of missions to Jupiter and Saturn to further investigate the life-supporting properties of their many moons. No Triton mission has yet passed the proposal phase, but there have been some theoretical missions to get us excited. One such proposed mission is the aptly named Triton Hopper, a small craft which would jump and land on the surface of the moon and harvest its nitrogen ice to use it as a propellant for a small rocket to achieve small jumps, or hops, over the surface. And while not a surface landing mission, in March of this year, a new flyby mission to the moon was proposed to be the subject of NASA's next discovery mission, called Trident. This flyby would aim to establish whether Triton has a subsurface ocean, as some have speculated, and if such an ocean was discovered, we could begin to have serious conversations about the prospect of habitability on the moon. We know that Triton likely has organic compounds on its surface, and so it is insane to think that even this far away from the life-giving warmth of the sun, the building blocks for some kind of simple life may yet exist below the surface of this geologically active wonder. Despite this, conversations of habitability seem to be a bit premature, seeing as we barely have our methods of how to reach the moon established. But the more we analyse moons, the more we are learning that they have their own possibilities and features, which may make them habitable. Several moons of the solar system have their own possibilities for an awakening of life, and in the case of Triton, certainly more so than its parent planet. Triton is a tiny captured world, orbiting a planet of mystery, whose story is just beginning to become clear to us. With missions to Mars and Venus, and the majesty of the gas giants, it's easy to lose sight of just how fascinating this region of the solar system is, and who knows what other fascinating discoveries are waiting for us in its darkness.